Hello, I'm the Irish guy, and wow, Chelsea 4, Manchester United 3. What was that? Lads, for all of the four people who are squealing for... Oh, where are your weekend Premier League predictions? Don't worry, they are at the end of this video. But here's just a question, let me know in the comment section below. Is it still worth doing an entire video for the Premier League predictions? Or should I just squeeze them into the end of a regular video like this on a Friday afternoon? Let me know in the comments and hit that subscribe button if you're new, absolute legends. Well, lads... Cole Palmer is a freak. I don't mean the sort of circus freak that goes on tour for six to nine months. Squatting in the corner of a cramped caravan. Ready to show the watching public that, yes, he is actually 50% frog. No, Palmer is the rare sort of British superstar that has exploded from nowhere. Lads, I do not remember being this surprised by a young winger's numbers since Gareth Bale. I mean, lads, by 2010, I'd established in my mind that he was some rotten bird brain left back who could not defend. He hadn't won any of his first 24 games in a Tottenham shirt. And was surely going to be sold to Birmingham for three million Quit. Yeah, a couple years later, he was scoring 26 goals and registering 14 assists in a single season before earning a world record move to Real Madrid. Lads, this is Pep Guardiola's biggest ever mistake. Yes, even bigger than letting Deli Ali anywhere near his daughter. Lads, Palmer is someone who's been at Manchester City since 2010. Yes, this is someone who probably used to turn up for training after school, munching on an ice cream, and probably freezing in awe whenever he saw Carlos Tevez arrive for work. Honestly, as a young boy clearly obsessed with football, he would probably have been psyched if Yaya Torre had accidentally sneezed in his face. He was probably that little excited child who probably told all of his Facebook buddies that he managed to sneak a selfie of David Silva whilst he was slurping on his tea. Laz, this guy's been indoctrinated into Pep Guardiola ball all throughout his teenage life. He might as well have come through La Masia itself. Yes, he technically won the treble last season, I guess, but come on. He was only given just 850 minutes on the pitch all of last season. No wonder he was too shy to hold the Champions League trophy. This bloke was mostly a cheerleader growing incredibly bored on the bench. He wasn't even given a chance. But at the start of this season, the clues were there for Pep. He was scoring in both the Community Shield and the UEFA Super Cup against both Arsenal and Sevilla. I mean, that goal he scored against Arsenal, that was a stunner. Outside the box, inside the foot, an Henri-esque finish. And he also scored a brilliant looping header against Sevilla. Yeah, he was sold within two weeks for a pathetic 40 million pounds. 40 mil! Arsenal signed a chubby teddy bear and Alexander Lacazette for more than that seven years ago. That's less money than what Man City paid for Calvin Phillips. Someone who you just know constantly as an emergency hamburger, send a tape to his armpit at all times. PSG paid more money for David Luiz 10 years ago. It was crazy. Why didn't City just give him minutes, slap him on that left wing and make him a first team starter he is good enough. Christ love, he is producing Riyad Mahrez numbers. He has scored more Premier League goals this season than Jack Grealish has since 2020. Lads, I thought it was obnoxious and silly when this newbie was immediately taking penalty duty off a far more experienced Raheem Sterling. But lads, he's taken 12 penalties in his life now for both City and Chelsea and has scored 12. Honestly, get Palmer on the plane for the Euros for penalties alone. Bringing on Jaden Sancho or Marcus Rashford in the final minute of Euro 2020 for their penalties. That was too big a moment for them. But for someone like Palmer, I reckon he probably could score a brain-melting pressure penalty for England with his first touch. But lad, for Manchester United, oh yuck. Letting Cole Palmer, a Manchester City boy, score a hat-trick against you. It was bad enough when you let Phil Foden do that 18 months ago. It's like this club are now just happy to let former Manchester City mascots realize their childhood dreams of knitting a treble against their city rivals. And lads, considering Erling Haaland also used to wear Man City shirts as a boy because of his dad, then that is three individual childhood Man City supporters who have scored a hat-trick past Eric Ten Hag's team. Okay, to be fair, I think Haaland was actually a bigger fan of Leeds, but still, that's hardly any better. Leeds fans also ate Manchester United with such a passion that, I mean, when Alan Smith swapped clubs, they probably felt like making him eat a skunk on toast. A Manchester City misfit scoring a dramatic hat-trick against Manchester United, scoring a treble the day after his old mate Phil Foden does. This was a statement to Pep Guardiola. Why? Why did you let him go? This is a man who hasn't made too many mistakes in setting players, but this one. When the likes of Jack Grealish have been kept, someone with the end product of a blind worm, that man cost 100 million pounds. Instead of blowing a British record on that greasy lump of hairspray, you could have just built the team around Palmer for free. Lads, Palmer is only second early Haaland in the Golden Boot race. I mean, lads, I partially take blame for his success because when he joined, I did a YouTube short saying that Palmer had ruined his Chelsea career. That he's now going to be shot in a huge pileup of unwanted reserves like Nunny McDwake. Yeah, he's literally in a very real Golden Boot race in April. He's also only two assist point on Watkins. So it's very realistic that Cole Palmer could be, by the end of May, not only have scored the most goals in the league this season, but also 
having recorded the most assists. I don't care that Chelsea won't qualify for Europe. That is PFA player of the season worthy. And City let him go. Well, as for Manchester United, losing the game the way you did was a disgrace. Imagine leaving Cole Palmer free on the edge of the box in the final minute of the match. He has just scored an equalizing penalty in the 100th minute. Whatever you do, do not lose the game. Yeah, for that corner kick, four Manchester United players are pointing at him. I mean, did their mother not tell him that it's true to point? But I'm sorry, as a seven-year-old boy, if I see some weirdo in Burger King nibbling on a severed finger at the back, then yes, mum, I'm going to point. Well, that's the complete lack of composure. What was Diogo Delo thinking? Lunging in on Nonny Mudwick from behind in the box? That was bad enough, but for Palmer to be completely free. You know, Chelsea's most dangerous player who was seeking a hat-trick? It's negligent to the extreme. Even when Palmer received the ball, the only player to run towards him was Mason Mountball. Lads, look at where his starting position was when the ball was played to Palmer. That is a solid 15 yards away. And even then, it wasn't a hell for another Superman sprint. It was just sort of a labored jog. Just for the cameras. It's not even like Mount would have been tired. He'd only been on the pitch 15 minutes. Lad, the magic of on is an 86th minute substitute to see out an important 3-2 win at your former club. And then that happens. It was all the same impact of a fat Calvin Phillips who came on for West Ham when they were 3-1 up at St. James's Park last week. He comes on and they lose 4-3. Poor old Mount. He even had to put up with Enzo Fernandez. His former Chelsea teammate, don't forget, full on mocking him by tapping the Chelsea badge in front of his face. They also had a really bitey head-to-head -head moment. Oh, come on. Does anyone really think that a South American American covered in prison tattoos. He's really going to be intimidated by someone who is probably fresh off a seaside picnic with Declan Rice. Mason Mount is about as scary as a cartoon chipmunk playing the banjo. Well, lads, he was given a rot of reception at Stamford Bridge. Boo to the hills. There were Judas shirts in the crowd. Was this... Was this really worth it? Was taking Ronaldo's number seven shirt at Manchester United, was that really worth ditching the club that made you? It's very rare that somebody can provide the winning assist in a Champions League final for a club. And yet not only are they not seen as a legend, but they are actively despised. I mean, in 20 years time, Mount is going to receive the Galas treatment when he's called up for Chelsea legend matches. I mean, we saw Fernando Torres get a nice reception for Liverpool in his legends match at Anfield last week, where he was playing under Sven Joran Eriksson, bless his heart. But Mount, he ain't getting that when he's 45. I don't think Chelsea fans will ever forgive this man. And I don't think Manchester United fans care for him all that much after a nightmare debut season. So right now, Mount is currently trapped in the Michael Owen territory where nobody actually likes him. He probably only gets a birthday card off his dog. But don't worry, Mason, okay? I'm sure Declan Rice will still be happy to feed you gingerbread men in the bath. But that's honestly, I've spent this morning Googling the footage of this scrap. But it's strange. I mean... Mount Enzo definitely sounds like some scary, unclimbable peak in Brazil. Just an impossible mountain littered with frozen corpses, empty oxygen tanks, and uneaten cheese sandwiches. Uh, I, I don't know. Would you bring a cheese sandwich up the highest mountain in Brazil? Lads, Manchester had done brilliantly to recover from a nightmare start where they had gone 2-0 down to five back through two goals from Alejandro Granacho and one for Bruno Fernandes. This was so close to being a huge, monumental win. Imagine taking this momentum into the final eight games of the season. They would be on 51 points, just six behind Tottenham and eight behind Aston Villa with a game at hand. But no, they somehow lost it and now nine points behind Spurs and 11 Behind Villa, they are only four above a Newcastle team who are so ravaged by injuries that they finished the last Premier League match with a back four of Emil Kraft, Fabian Schaar, Dan Byrne, and Paul Dummett. Yeah, guess which one gave away a penalty at the end? Well, lads, this is not good enough for Eric Ten Hag. The game management was appalling. I mean, Pochettino versus Ten Hag. I mean, believe it or not, that was once an epic Champions League semi-final. One of the greatest games in history. And now they're playing out this match, so... Okay, I guess Pochettino versus Ten Hag produces some crazy chaotic matches. I mean, I hope in three years' time they are still playing against each other when Pochettino is the coach of Valencia and Ten Hag is at Villarreal. Well, now, do you realize how bad this is? This is now three defeats for the last five public games, and it really should have been four considering how hopeless they were at Brentford. This is off the back of a quality February where they had won four league matches in a row. Chelsea had been a joke this season. If they had lost this match, they would have been 12th in the league. It would have been their 26th Premier League defeat since the start of last season. I mean, now, this is a place where Wolves recently came and smashed Chelsea 4-2. 10-man Burnley escaped with a draw last week. Yeah, I still stink of paint spot. You know what? I think we should start putting some mild respect on Pochettino. This man has received some horrible flack from the fans this season. Treating him as if he's Rafa Benitez. And yes, at times, it has not been good enough. Sure, but there is definitely progress. That is six league games without defeat now. They haven't lost a Premier League match in over two months. Yes, I know that this is Chelsea, but look at what Chelsea it was. He inherited a sloppy, disinterested squad. We'd won just one of the final 12 league games last season. This was a club in utter freefall. I mean, to cram in seven Premier League defeats after April 1st was terrible. This was not an easy job. The spirit 
in this team is unrecognizable to the dead corpse of a thing that Frank Lampard had a year ago. Pochettino has been given a Chelsea team so firmly wedged in the mud. And you know what? Yes, I was angry that they failed to beat Burnley because that made me do this. But I actually think, unlike Ten Hag, he is making huge progress. So leave him alone. Chelsea are going in the right direction. And Palmer is an absolute star. Anyway, yes, okay, quickly, let's chuck in the predictions for the weekend then. Okay, right. Um, Chris Ballas nil, Man City 2. I mean, come on, solid, easy City win. If Manchester City don't win this match, then I will pour melted ice cream on my nose. I'll go with after a bit of three, Brentford 1. Surely a straightforward win against a Bees team in order of free fall. Then the prize for the ugliest match of the weekend goes to Everton versus Burnley. Sean Dyche against his former club. Yeah, I was just nil-nil. Horrible. Then Newcastle travel to Fulham. I'm actually going to go for a 2-1 home win. I'm sorry, but Newcastle are down to the absolute bare bones of their squad. It's almost like the defenders are having a competition to see who can possibly damage their bodies the most. Two of them have ACLs. Eddie Howe is having to jump dumb it under the pitch against Everton. So yeah, I see this being Fulham 2, Newcastle 1. Then Bournemouth travel to Luton Town. This is a game Rob Edwards needs to be winning if they want to stay up, but they won't. 1-0. Antoine Semenya with the match-winning strike. Then Wolves versus West Ham, which is a pretty grim 1-1 draw. Then Arsenal will sneak a 1-0 win at Brighton. Someone like Kai Havertz popping up at the late in the box to ruin Derby's day. Honestly, if the Seagulls win this match, then I will chew every page of a Captain Underpants book. I'm gonna eat that thing one day, all right? I've already said my United vs. Liverpool will be a tense 1 1 draw. And then I think a revamped, freshly confident Chelsea will punch up Sheffield United 3 0 at Bramall Lane for Tottenham Edge, a tight home match against the rejuvenated Nottingham Forest 2 1. Brennan Johnson with the late winner against his former club. Anyway, that's the video. Let me know what do you think. Let me know in the comments. Have I got this all wrong? Let me know. Let me know. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a lecture and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.